Hey folks, Jordy here for Premier Basics and a big thanks to BenQ for sponsoring this video. They sent us the brand new PD3420Q monitor, which is specifically built for video editors and content creators with its highly accurate color reproduction at a very affordable price. Now we're gonna do some color grading on it and throughout the video, I'll scatter some more information about the monitor. Now I'm gonna teach you all about the Lumetri scopes today, how you can work with them and how you can use them to get perfect skin tones. The Lumetri scopes can be found from the menu on top, window, and from here click on Lumetri scopes. Now this window does not do anything except for measuring colors and exposure. You can kind of see it as a thermometer that measures temperature. We could go outside and guess the temperature. I mean, we can tell if it's warm or cold, but to know the exact temperature value, we use that thermometer. And that's the exact same thing with the Lumetri scopes. We could look at our monitor, and when you have a color accurate display like this BenQ, it's definitely going to be easier to guess the colors, but by knowing the exact measured values, we can make precise color changes to get the most natural and perfect skin tones. Now, there are a couple of different tools in here if you right click on the window. From here, you can enable which tools that you'd like to see or not. And let's start with the waveform. So I'm only going to enable that one for now. And if you're seeing different waveforms in here, like the RGB ones, then right click again and choose waveform type Luma. This will measure and display the exposure and our shots. And when we play the video in a timeline, we can see how that waveform changes, and you can probably already tell what it kind of resembles. The horizontal axis is the same as the video. On the left, we have these clouds, in the middle, the woman, and on the right, these mountains. However, on the vertical axis, the waveform will display the exposure level, from 0 being absolute black to 100 being absolute white. The scale is called IRE, but I'm just gonna refer to it as percentage, as that's gonna make more sense right now. On the left side, we've got mostly clouds, so that's why we don't have much information on the bottom. But on the right side, we do have some more darker mountains, which we can see back here. The bright sky above these mountains can be found back on top. So that's how we can read the waveform. But how exactly do we use it now? Well, I'm gonna go to the opacity property of my clip to take the pen tool and draw a mask around the bright area of the woman's face. The waveform will now only display the area that we've selected, and I can read that the skin tones just lay above 50%. Now there's this beauty standard where we want the skin tones to be on 70%, and I'm saying beauty standards because because in dark scenes or in creative work, it's not always needed. It's a standard, but it doesn't mean that you always need to follow that standard. So let's bring up the exposure so that the skin tones lay around this 70%. We can disable the opacity for a moment to hide the mask and see the changes over the entire picture. The image looks already a ton better, much brighter and more natural. Now I hear you think, what about black skin tones? Well, obviously we don't want to push that to 70%. Here the standard is between 40 to 60%. It's gonna depend on how black the skin tones are, but the whole workflow is exactly the same. Now, you've already seen some pretty cool shots from the BenQ Ultra White IPS LED display, but what does it actually do? Well, for starters, it's calibrated from the factory using their AQ color technology. For the geeks out there, it has a Delta E under 3, which is pretty good. This means that you can take it out of the box and start working with it immediately. It covers up to 98% of the P3 color profile, which is very good, because that means that it covers sRGB and Rec. 709 completely, which is what we use for color grading. It comes with HDR10 support, you also have a couple of different modes for when you're working in a dark room, or for specific tasks like animation, or when working with 3D wireframes. You can easily switch between these modes or control the menus with the included dongle, which is a very nice feature. You can also install the additional software Display Pilot. This gives you a whole bunch of different options like syncing ICC profiles, customized keyboard shortcuts to change settings, change the color mode based on the application, and much more. You also get Dual View Mode, which allows you to display two different color modes, allowing you to compare. And this is a very nice feature, I believe. The USB-C connection allows you to use the connections on the side, and for the Mac users out there, with the MBook mode, you automatically adjust and sync to monitor with your system. So you get a ton of features inside a very good monitor for creative tasks at a very affordable price. You can learn more by clicking the first link in the description down below. So back to Premiere, because that is how you fix the exposure. Now what about colors? This shot looks good, I guess. Nothing wrong with it, or maybe there is. Let's measure the colors. Right click on the Lumetri scopes and choose Vector Scope YUV. 
and I'm going to disable the waveform for now. Now the vector scope is going to throw all the colors together and display them on the color wheel. We mostly have red and blue colors as the highlight spikes to that site. When pushing green into this shot, you can see how the entire highlight is going to move over to that site. Now the further away the highlight goes, the more saturated the shot will be. And you can see it very well when I increase or decrease the saturation. Now just as before, I'm going to enable the opacity to bring up my mask again. The vector scope now displays the color of within my mask, which are the skin tones. And I can now tell that the skin tones have too much magenta in them, because this guideline right here refers to the skin tones. Now we could go ahead and push the colors from the white balance controls in here, but that will alter the entire picture. So I'm going to go over to the color wheels and match and use the midtones color wheel to steer that highlight onto the skin tones line. The opposite of magenta is green, so that is what I'm going to add. Now let's disable the opacity and look at the before and after. We can now clearly see that we've improved this shot a lot. We've got natural skin tones that we could have only corrected by measuring the exposure and colors. Now there is a lot more that we can do with the Lumetri scope, so if you want to see more tutorials about that, definitely let me know in a comment down below. But thank you so much for watching guys, thank you BenQ for the support, definitely check out the monitor in the description down below. Now here on my left side you can find a playlist about more color grading tutorials, so definitely check that out guys, there are for beginners, so it's really cool. Also don't forget to subscribe to see us every single week, and as always, stay creative!